Cantus catching his first career score. The junior goes 6'2", 195 pounds, and he finally reaches the end zone. We've got to try to get Domer. A lot of time down the left sideline. He's got his man, and there he goes. Corbett. Corbett for the touchdown. It goes for 50 yards, and Stonehill jumps on top, 23 to 20. Marantes in his own end zone, fires over the middle and it's intercepted by LaMonica, a diving pick at the Duquesne 17, and that's going to do it. With 1.21 to go, Stonehill celebrates along the near sideline. Paul, they've deserved it. They've made the plays that had to be made. They've met the challenges whenever it looked like Duquesne was going to pull away from them. They stepped up and did what had to be done. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing about this game, I mean, it was, there was, it was a lot of firsts, right? My message to the team, uh, you know, over these three weeks and, and especially today was, listen, let's go out there, let's take a moment to take it all in, right? And let's snap right into back into the moment, right? To, to own the moment because, you know, there is a lot of distractions and things. Uh, obviously, there are positive things around the game, uh, you know, being able to celebrate you know, 50 years of Stonehill football with our very first captains for our very first Division One game um, was obviously special regardless of the outcome. Um, you know, to have uh, a nationally televised game, our first Division One football game. Um, so there's a lot of great, you know, added elements to it. Um, on top of it just being a really exciting football game, right, and an opportunity for us to go out and uh, and play our first Division One game in front of our fans. Um, and uh, I thought, you know, it was definitely a grind through the three weeks having a double buy. You know, that's something I've never experienced before. And, you know, it's all about maintaining that competitive stamina when you know you're not preparing for a team, you know, an opponent that you're going to play on that Saturday. So I just thought the guys did such a great job, you know, especially the back end of that from a preparation standpoint. You know, we had some great practice, some great energy, some great focus, and it showed up today. Yeah, I mean, the message to the team at halftime was the same that it's been all week. Like, we know that we're going to face adversity. It's not when, it's it's not if it happens, it's when it happens, right? And it's it's all about how we're going to respond to it. So being down at halftime, obviously, it was a close game. It was back and forth. You know, our guys knew that we were in a fight, and that's what we said to them. Like, you're in it right now, so stay in it, you know? Um, good things are going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. we got to roll with it. Um, and we got to make sure we build momentum off the pauses, and I just thought we did that really well in the second half. Uh, yeah, you know, I thought, I thought our coordinators called a great game, you know, across the board, you know? Um, the the big play to, to Jermaine um, up the sideline was a great route by him. It was a great call by by, by uh, our offensive staff. Um, it was a great route by him. It was a great ball by Asher. Um, and then obviously him finishing it. Um, and then defensively to get two interceptions in the in you know in that fourth quarter was you know that that won the game for us essentially. So um, again, it's playing complimentary football and it's it's guys stepping up when their number gets called. Yeah, definitely no secret uh, on our campus and in our locker room, but yeah, I, I think uh, people saw what he's capable of. Um, you know, he runs tough, he's compact, uh, he runs through tackles, um, and he also showed some really good elusiveness today, right, making some guys miss and, and finding some extra yardage, some hidden yardage after contact was, was huge. So um, I thought he played a great game. I thought we moved people up front offensively. Um, I thought our O-line played really well, really hard, and, and it, was a, it was a gritty game by them up front. Um, and I thought we just did some good stuff to scheme them up and, and give us some numbers advantages too. So it, it, it's all all encompassing, I think, when it comes down to it. Yeah, I thought what really showed out in the second half on defense is that we were the aggressor. You know, like uh, there was a times in the first half where we were kind of on our heels, some piles were falling forward, and you know, I, I don't think there's any doubt when we watch the film, like our guys were 
were the aggressors in, in the second half. And you know, playing in your first Division One game against a Division One opponent, um, you know, that's that's really awesome to see. Absolutely, it feels amazing. We practiced hard all week. We came out and we it showed. It showed practice showed how hard we practiced. Let me ask you this, Jermaine. I thought that you might be able, with your quickness and speed, to run outside effectively. But what really surprised me was the quickness and the efficiency that you ran the ball inside the tackles. Your quick feet made it very difficult for those front seven for Duquesne to stop you. Did you guys expect to have the success that you had inside the tackles? Um, absolutely. We harped all week inside, inside. We just ran a bunch of inside counters, zone, 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 and it showed. It worked. 26 carries for 130 yards. That's your season high. Three receptions for 63, including what I want to ask you about now, the 50-yard touchdown right in front of your bench down the sideline. Take me through that play because you certainly turned on the Jets. Oh, my God. That play was – my heart was pounding. Uh, so we ran we ran a little a little pass play or a play action. Um, the linebacker was literally on my hip. I see my quarterback – cock his arm back and just let it go so I ran right under it and just kept running tell me what the mindset is was of your team coming into the game what did you expect are you going in you've you've heard all about the the mighty uh Duquesne Dukes and how they've been the you know perennial favorites one of the better teams in the NEC for for the last 10 years did you guys expect anything different than what you received or did you anticipate being able to hang with them or well, were you surprised? We we definitely anticipated to hang with them. Uh, well, on film, we thought they were pretty good. I mean, they showed they were pretty good. They they came, they played hard, and I think our offensive line bust their ass all game, and it showed. Final thing, Jermaine, your quarterback, Arshir Karaha, went 12 of 18 for 149 yards and two touchdown strikes. And by the way, he showed some pretty good quicks on that 30-yard touchdown run. What's your grade on that one? <laughs> A plus. <laughs> <laughs> what was that play, Jermaine? Was that just a zone read where he read the the end of the line of scrimmage when the guy chased you? He just pulled it and kept it. Literally, <laughs> and the crazy thing about it was, I was ha holding the ball <laughs> as you, hard as I can. I wanted it. <laughs> you almost kept it, huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jermaine Corbett, congratulations again. Our star of the game as Stone Hill beats Duquesne, twenty-four to twenty. Yeah, huge. I mean. We had three weeks to prepare, you know, it could have went uh, against our favor and it, it did. Uh, coach emphasized it all week, just uh, doing our job and straining, getting the best out of each practice and that's what we did. We didn't want to take the two weeks and just lollygag and go through the motions and we came out hot and we played Stonehill football and got, came out with the win. So, Yeah, we just had to come up uh, defensively, we just had to come out and get our stops, you know, trust that our offense was going to go down and put up some points for us and they did when we needed them to and they held us down and we had some uh, mistakes on defense as well. So. Uh, I think as far as time management, we held that pretty well and uh, came out two-minute drill at the end of the game to get a stop, and we came up huge with the pick and uh, got us off the field to get the win. Did that. It was like they were, they were trying to do anything to win. They were desperate for something, you know, trying to get a big play to get their momentum going. Um, I mean, it got them for them, but we just held our ground, and, you know, we had to bounce back and keep playing football. There's just four quarters in the game. You know, we can't just let one possession deter us away from our common goal. So uh, that's what we did. We just came kept kept fighting. Down. Yeah, first half, we were all excited. We knew we had them by the throat. I mean, we just made some mistakes that we could easily clean up, quick, quick fixes, so to say. Um, yeah, we were all just very motivating with each other, you know, trying to keep each other up. Um, and like I said, the common goal is to get the win. So whatever we had to do, we just came out and did that. Yeah, Coach Jones needed us. He said, uh, let's go be some back alley guys. That's what he emphasizes all season. So uh, we just had to go out there and be gritty. You know, Coach Gardner, that's what the dig stands for discipline. It's like grit, and that was the gritty piece in the fourth quarter. We had to, you know, we wanted the game. We had to go take it from them, basically. So that's what we did. You know, we approach it every 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 week the same. You know, whatever team it is, we don't look at their record or how good they are. We know we acknowledge it, but we don't let that get to our head and try and you know throw us away from the goal. But we just come out and play our game. That's what Gardner talks about every every week. Just play our football game, and that's what we do.